course, we have here IFB Pro Claire Rouse, and she this is her place, BSDQ Fitness. And you know, um, I met Claire about a month ago at um, the uh, Amazon Fitness uh, Magazine um, release, and she's been competing quite some time. She's a mother. She's also a businesswoman, and you know, this is a great opportunity. So, ma'am, please share your story with us out here in the real world. Oh, I started about 20 plus years ago in the Jane Fonda days. No. And a spa lady, basically, I went in there and I just opened up the place. Um, I was actually a client, um, just had gym membership. And they hired me. And then um, I was. Um, Introduced to teaching classes because I knew all the routines and so they just threw me into the routine I ended up getting my certification. I've always been an athlete. I played soccer for years and softball and I was kept in the swim team all kinds of good stuff mm. in high school So I was like, what am I gonna do? I was 21 years old 20 years old and then I was like on an athletic level besides being a normal working mom at the time I needed to do something, so I got into fitness, and it just blossomed from there, and um, I got into bodybuilding late in life, 10, 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. I started at 47, and then it's just from there, I got a pro card three years ago, it's been three years. Yes, um, you know. and you got your pro cards at the North Americans, right? Uh, no, I got my Pittsburgh uh, Pro Nationals during the coronavirus in Orlando. Oh, okay. 55 and over category um, women's physique. Yeah, that's the tough thing about it. There's a pro card. I know like a, a lady who I did interview with, um, Lisa Mullins-Ozzy. She was in the uh, NPC for like almost 20 years before she finally got hers. I mean, and this sometimes... Some ladies get lucky enough, you know, I, I, I got a guy who knew, has a lady he trains, she's got a pro card no more than maybe just a, barely a month after she started competing. And people got to understand, it, it takes a while. Sometimes it's about, you know, what condition you come in, anything else. I mean, um, your experience, you know, you see some, you, like I said, this is, I have to say, you have your boots on the ground, 10 toes down. You've been in the trenches and you see a lot. Right. I have, um, been through a few coaches, just one, two two coaches um you know sometimes you get to revamp renew let life be life i took two years off mm -hmm. then i went ahead and i went to nationals and i placed fourth i didn't do that great but learning experience learning curve then i said okay i'm going to nationals again next year and that's when i got my pro card kim hurt she's a pro she was my coach at the point in time, love her to death, you know, and life happens. So, um, I got my pro card. She was awesome. And, uh, that was three years ago. And my coach right now, who is awesome, he's great. Uh, and we just keep pushing, you know, as long as I'm able to do this sport, enjoy it at the age of 58. Placing is beautiful. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I'm just very appreciative to be able to do this sport and to have longevity to be in here. Yeah. And um, just doing my thing, you yeah. know. And I do this not for the glamour. There's no glamour in bodybuilding. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, I mean the dieting, the training, the da-da-da, on and on and on. Never ending cycle, but then again, you got life to take care yeah, of. I, I got grandbabies, I got a husband, I got two boys. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, but it's just like you appreciate life, you just grab it and you go with it and you do your thing. Yeah, but like I said, this sport is like I said, it is a tough sport. Like, my doing the content, interview with you ladies, and it's a lot of sacrifice. Like I said, you are a mother, you had kids, and you know, you're raising your boys, and then you know, you're you're working and you're competing and you're training and you're, it's just so much. And people got to re realize that. It's not just as you just to pop on the stage, put on a bikini and spray tan and just boom, you're, you're, um, that's it. It takes time. It takes dedication, consistency. Um, are you perfect? No, you're not going to be perfect. Sometimes you have your bad days. Sometimes you have your good days. Um, my day starts at 4 a.m. in the morning and I don't get off work until 6 30 every single night okay. so i'm when i get up at four 
ready to go to the gym, do my thing, then I train clients all morning, and then I go to work. You have to work to pay for your hobby. This hobby is not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I love it, you know, and just being consistent. And I have the same schedule every time. Now my boys are going, Mom, you need a vacation. You need to take time. <laughs> Cabo is coming in October. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Girls trip, so yeah, I know because I'm I'm a, I'm a mom's boy too. But my mother, she 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 raised she had to raise uh, six kids, and you know, and she had at least uh, three boys and plus two grandsons. And you know, that's the thing about women like you. I have a lot of respect for you because, like I said, you know, you as a, a woman being in a sport which people would say is considered very masculine, but you know, it's like any sport. You know, you know, it's the next level, and you're in the division where in which it's it's changing. You know, I remember when physique started, I was a big fan of physique. I, I called it watered down female bodybuilding. And you know, but now it's starting me doing this content and learning like ladies like you and Mary Ann, like you know, me and Mary Ann just did a an interview I had with a lady by the name of JV Pinder and we talked about how the sport's changing, how it's progressing, how, you know, with, with Shauna here right here, she is she was in quite a few divisions and then you hit, she you know sometimes you hit that ceiling as a competitor. And in your mindset you feel like you know, is there no limits to it or you should like you keep going or, you know? Right. So the reality of it is that this sport, you know, a lot of people go through the categories, figure, then they get a physique or they even start off as bikini and then they just keep growing and growing as a person. As you're getting the judge, the judge's feedback and everything else, then you got to take that time and revamp and say, what is right for me? You know, so, you know, it, while you're growing, and I mean, granted, when I started, I was like 135 pounds, and now I get oh, on stage. Oh, is that when I was seven? <laughs> <laughs> right, and then the first time I got on stage, I was 125 pounds, right? So now when I got my pro card, I was 138 pounds on stage. So your body grows, but do you stay at that weight? No, the reality is once you stop the cardio, once you, start eating more carbohydrates your body weight goes up so my typical normal weight used to be 135 and then now on an off season i'm about 154 pounds so your body grows into each category so i had to think of what i need to do i actually started backwards i started in bodybuilding i could never get big enough so the suggestion from judges was saying hey i think you really need to go to physique and so I went to physique. Mm -hmm. That's a good move because, you know, some women, like I said, like so you start backwards because, you know, back then when, when um, bodybuilding started, there was only really one division for women, you know. And then by the 90s, you had fitness. And then later on came figure, then came physique. And now you have, I think, at least about six divisions for the women compared to the men, which is four. And, you know, and some women, like I, like I said, it's just the work you put into it. And where you fit it, you know, sometimes it's not, you just can't put a square peg, peg into the circle. This is true. Very yeah. true. Because uh, my first national experience was actually in the bodybuilding category. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to go in light, lightweight category, 125 and down. Mm -hmm. So I didn't make it <laughs> <laughs> by three pounds, three which pounds. was an experience. And then I'm up on stage with these females who weigh 140, and I'm like, oh, look at little tiny me up there, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it. It's what you put into it. And I just couldn't get big enough. So I had to make the decision whether to stay in bodybuilding, go on an off season, get big, 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 and then, or do physique. So I took the chance and I did physique. I stuck in physique and won all these lovely trophies that are sitting around yeah, here. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so, and then there was a point in time where uh, I decided I was going to do the national show. I had to cross over, of course, from bodybuilding to physique. And then just took it from there, and that's where I got my pro card. Yeah, that's a great thing. Yeah. So, if you can give any advice, especially somebody like yourself would be in this um, sports long you have, what would you tell somebody who uh, who's you know what dipping their feet into this, and what things you were you know if things that you could have changed when you got into it, what would have been? Um, at the beginning, I'm gonna say I was like, yeah, this is me. I'm Claire. I'm out there. I'm social media, social media, social media, crazy, right? So my, it doesn't hurt to keep to yourself. Yeah, you can post a picture now and then. So humility, you know. 
Be humble. Just being humble about what you do. You know, the sport is not about A, B, C, D, or E, F, G. In the social media world today, everybody wants everything to be hot and ready. Hot, ready, and mm -hmm. one plate. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what they with young you know, youngins. They, they want things right now and then. And, you know, you get, it takes time. Nothing. Yes. Uh, it's like with me. I, I say I, I was like I was talking with some of the people, and they know I was pretty much over four hundred pounds. So my mom, I took care of my mom. She was sick, and then when she passed away, I said, "No, it's time to take care of myself." And you know, I'm down to four nine, and it takes, and especially being a fat man from the south, is too much attention. This is Fourth of July weekend, and my sister she's planning on something, and it be calling you, baby, be calling you, day, be calling you, day. <laughs> I know, um, yeah, and it was a big transition for me. I lived in Maryland, so mm -hmm. Maryland, big city, like compared yeah. to North Carolina, yeah. slowed me down. Yes, yes, yeah, slow down. I was like, what am I gonna do? So, but no, um, actually, humility. Putting the hard work in, grinding. People are going to come to you, approach you, be friendly. You know, if they want some advice, it doesn't have to give them a little. You don't have to give them the whole spiel. I pay a coach, and that's why I pay a coach. Yeah. He helps me and uh, basically guides me along. I learn from him. As a, each coach you do have, you learn from. And um, bottom line, it's about you. It's not about anybody else. I do this for me. Um, you know, um, do I have to? No. Do I want to sometimes give up their town? Yeah, it's hard, you yeah. know, but I don't. I just love the sport. Yeah, that's good. You know? So anyway, if anybody want to reach you or see you or how, you know, you have social media, I know you most definitely because I follow you. So share that, please, with us. Uh, yeah, um, my Instagram is Ralph Pro. I got hacked, so yeah, I, don't I, don't many, <laughs> I don't have that many followers on there right now, but um, my main page did get hacked, so, yes, and yeah. that's my new, and then I'm also Claire Rouse, IFBB Pro on Facebook, uh, you can find me at VFDQ, training people early in the morning, uh, dirt early, and then also Body by Claire.coach is my website that I have. And if you want to reach out to me, you're more than welcome to. Well, folks, you know, this woman is, you know, 58 years old. Look at her traps. Look at what I say. Wow. It's, it's the, most, the muscle per smoke on me going, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to be behaved. I'm trying to behave. I'm trying to behave. But like I said, you know, ladies like you who've been in the sport, in this game, I have a lot of respect for you. I, like I said, I've been a fan of the bottom since I was like about, you know, before I was like maybe about 10, 11 years old, my brother used to collect the, uh, used to play football and used to get the muscle mags. And seeing you ladies now in life, in person, and just, mm -hmm. it's just blowing my mind. It's just, you know, it's like living a dream almost. But you know what? Women like you, I want to say like this thank you. And, oh, you know, we respect you. And you know what? And, and all you uh, guys out there, this is a woman with grandkids, a husband, kids. You know, don't, you know, hey, don't be those weird guys out there. And that's why I'm like, never say you can't, because I've done it. I put the time in. I sacrifice some time. You know, there's a lot of things that you don't do with your family. Um, I'm bringing a little meal, and everybody else is having Fourth of July. <laughs> so happy Fourth, everybody. Yeah, happy Fourth. Um, and it, there's a lot of things that you sacrifice. But I always make time for my husband no matter what. Yeah. I work my schedule around him because he is the main man. He is oh, he's the man. He yeah. is the man. Yeah, so, he loves his Claire. Yeah, we've been through the ups and downs of life and everything. And he just is like, well, why do you do this crazy sport? And that's, so, good. that's good to have somebody stand by you. But he stands by me. He lets me do my thing. And I have, you know... We have respect for each other. That's good. Well, thank you, man, for sharing time and coming to your spirit. It took me a while to find it because I'm a country boy. I go by landmarks and stuff like that. You know, but you I mean the big old oak tree on the corner. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Usually something like that, you know, like be a big rick barn or something like that. Or, you know, I said if it was Dollar General, but once I got it, I got it. But I got family in Fayetteville, and you know, I used to come here a good bit, but, you know, sometimes some of these places, I, I'm, I know Fayetteville is like in a circle. Once you get the hang of it, but, you know, but I appreciate your time and no thank you for sharing uh, your, your place with us and, you know, much respect to you. I hope we, any plans of competing this year, or you're sticking this year off? Oh, I'm getting ready for July 24th. Oh, yeah, that's the... Um, the World... Yeah, because uh, I know... International Master Pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know I was talking with uh, Mary Ann. She's planning on doing that. Yes, and my girl will be up there standing with me on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, she, she was... I did a... a 
interview with a girl by the name Jenna Pinder. I know you heard of her, mm-hmm. and she was there. She came in, you know, and we came in contact, and you know, and I, I love Marianne. She's she's a she's a character. She's a spirit. Yeah, she's very sweet. I love her. Yeah, well, I do appreciate your time, and I hope things go on. I hope maybe, like I said, you know, hope to see you more in the future. And like I said, congratulations and everything else. Thank you. Happy Fourth, everybody. And happy Fourth to you. Thank you.